What's good, Josh? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out the WWE Stalker by uh, Top Ten Wrestling. Um, this is gonna be an interesting one. We've discussed people doing some weird things, like uh, fans taking it a little bit too far with their love for certain wrestlers, and you know, it's 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 unfortunate that sometimes it gets to the point where they start stalking individuals, and I'm, I'm here to say please don't do that there's nothing wrong with you know showing your love and appreciation for a particular wrestler but when you start trying to find out where they live and try to stalk them if they come to your city for a show you're doing too much you may want to chill may want to get some type of uh psychiatric help because that is not normal you shouldn't be doing that so we're gonna check this out once again this is on the uh top 10 wrestling youtube channel so i believe this will be my first time checking them out i could be wrong um uh, but we're gonna see what this video is all about appreciate all love and support and i am still your undisputed youtube wrestling champ of the world let's get right into this one man we discuss the wrongings in the world of wrestling, but we're usually discussing wrestlers or wrestling personalities, people who are directly involved in wrestling. But an area of wrestling we haven't discussed is the consumers of wrestling, the oh fans who keep the industry afloat. Because let me tell you, the wrestling fandom might be the most degenerate fandom of all time. Maybe he's 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 kind of spot on. I I, I see the the comments on twitter it's it's a cesspool a lot of times like sometimes you guys cannot separate the fact from what's real and what's wrestling you know these people are people at the end of the day they they have feelings they have lives and sometimes y'all take it a little bit too far the other than sonic Hidden within these wrestling fans are viewers who are more than obsessed with wrestling so and wrestlers <laughs> to the point that they become it stalkers. Some of them online. A select few, though, take it one step further and do it in real life. There have been... You're going to give me what I want. There's no way you can avoid it. Mark my words, I'm going to SummerSlam with you as your boyfriend. I'm going to force you to do what I want. Okay, all right, yeah. All right, it's, yeah, okay, this is getting out of hand now. Numerous cases of stalking in wrestling, but today we're going to be discussing one case, one that has gone on for many years and even inspired a character that has debuted in WWE recently. Really? What's up, guys? It's Topton Wrestling, and today we're going to be discussing the WWE Performance Center Stalker. Make sure to like and subscribe. Never heard of this. And let's begin. Or maybe on I have. August 31st, remember. 2015, a bombshell news story dropped about a man who was reportedly shot outside of the WWE Performance Center. At around 1.40 p.m., police arrived to the Performance Center, responding to a report of trespassing they received. At first, details of the incident weren't revealed, but soon after, the suspect was revealed to be a 29-year-old man named Armando Maltalvo. It was said that two deputies approached Maltalvo, who may have been armed with a knife, and after he refused Whoa. to comply, he charged at one of the officers, Whoa. leading the officer to retreat and fire a single shot at him, which struck him. Maltalvo reportedly suffered a life-threatening wound from the gunshot, and he had to undergo surgery, and it would be successful, and he lived. After this story started making the rounds, Triple H would get on Twitter to give some clarity to fans to tell them what is actually going on here. He stated the following. Unfortunately, a deranged individual with no WWE affiliation who had a court order prohibiting him from being on WWE property was involved in an incident with an Orange County Sheriff's deputy in the parking lot of the WWE Performance Center. We defer to the Orange County Sheriff's Department for further comment and information. And soon after, the police Damn. would release their statement. Orange County Sheriff Jerry Demings held a press conference where he stated the following. The wrestling org got a restraining order against Montalvo earlier this month after a string of violent run-ins at the facility. Earlier this summer, the WWE says Montalvo spread his feces and urine on the building. He even posted a video of himself mixing the human waste and reduced fat milk in a bucket. So yeah, as it... I don't even know what to say. That was disturbing. Just 
seeing the words, I can only imagine those who actually saw the shit was just disturbed. Yeah, he definitely needed to be restrained, some type of restraining order. I mean, granted, it didn't work. And the police had to get involved, but still. Turns out, Jeez. this guy had been an ongoing issue for a month. It was also said that Montalvo had a fixation on a female wrestler, and after his social media was found, it was found out that AJ Lee oh, was his wrestler no. that he was fixated on, who had been out of the WWE and retired for five months at that point, which begs the question, why Montalvo tried to go? Oh, and yeah, a video of the whole thing was released. Seem right in the head, bro. Hey. <sighs> okay. Oh, okay. he's getting tased. He's getting tased. Holy, bro. Oh, here we go. Here comes Scott. Oh, gosh. Oh, oh now he's God. ruining the lance. Oh, he's getting... He's going down. The case would go to court, with more about Montalvo being revealed. It was revealed in court by his father that he is schizophrenic and has borderline personality Holy. disorder. In this court session, Montalvo claims that he was the victim and he pled not guilty to his charges of aggravated assault on a law enforcement officer... Yeah, man, he definitely needs some type of mental health, uh, like mental rehabilitation, bro. But th that's not normal behavior for anybody to just be doing that. Jesus, man. Resisting arrest and trespassing. In the end, Montalvo was found as incompetent and sent to a state mental facility. Yeah. However, Montalvo was not done with the WWE. In 2018, Montalvo would pop up again as he posted videos of himself on Instagram walking around Full Sail University during an NXT taping, shouting things such as, Vince McMahon's people like to make things up. Oh my god, he's waving a big thick chain on our property. Trespass him. Lock him up. And, you see, I'm bigger than NXT. I'm bigger than that whole organization. I'm bigger than McMahon. You might ask yourself, how has he made it outside an NXT taping? Yeah. Why is nobody stopping this? And that's because, unfortunately for WWE, there was nothing saying that Montalvo couldn't be there. Which is why oh. the next month, WWE would officially file a restraining order. This was granted. The restraining order was granted. But I'm not even going to try and pretend that that's the end of the story. Yeah. Montalvo did not stop. In May of 2020, WWE had to take Montalvo to court again. What Dave McKinnon, who works event security for WWE at the Performance Center, noted in a court filing that he has witnessed Montalvo harassing WWE and its employees for at least the past five years. Jesus he also Christ. wrote that Montalvo has continued to ignore a court order from March 22nd, 2019. That said, Montalvo was prohibited from the Performance Center. They took Montalvo to court to try and get a permanent injunction order that was to bar Montalvo from several locations related to the WWE, with the Performance Center just being one of them. He had apparently spotted Montalvo on the property as late as that very same month. Jeez. It seemed as though this guy just frequently popped up at the Performance Center. But once again, and I cannot stress this enough, this did not stop him the very next month he would swing by the performance center again one last time and yes it was all caught on video on a facebook live filmed by montalvo himself
Who's going to shoot me? People in the comments saying is that people in the comments are saying is that Lacey Ev uh, Lacey Evans? Is that is that her? This took place in June of 2020. In the video, you can hear the likes of Dana Brooke and Lacey Evans try oh. to get him to leave. Meanwhile, he shouts about his wrestling dream and makes other nonsensical statements. That same month, on June 22nd, 2020, he would come back to the Performance Center again during Monday Night Raw. So was he stopped by the Performance Center to yell things such as, where are the divas? Police were called and Maltalvo was detained. And from jail, he would send the WWE attorney this letter. So yeah, um, go ahead. Pause it. Try reading it. What? All of this has been relived in a documentary by A&E in September of this year, which I would highly recommend. It has loads of footage of everything that happened. And yes, all this is supposedly the inspiration for Scripts, the character that Reggie has debuted as in NXT recently. Apparently, it's taken inspiration from this case. And yeah, that's about the story so far. And I put the emphasis on so far, and I'm just really covering my tracks, because you never know what this guy is going to do, and how nothing is ever going to stop him. But yeah, like I said, that's it from me. Follow me on Twitter, at Top Ten Wrestling. My Instagram's down below as well. All of my other links down below in the description. Like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Yo, man, I'm going to go ahead and give uh, give the guy a subscription. Um, subscribe and post notification. Um, I don't even know what to say. The fact that, I guess, Scripps is inspired by this this craziness is, is cringe in itself. What? I don't know what the hell I just watched. I don't. What do you do? The dude just keeps coming back. No no amount of paper is stopping him. What do you do? I don't know if he's done it recently. If you guys know, have an update on this, let me know down below. Um But yeah, this is This is weird. Don't be this guy. Do not. Do not go up to the performance center or no weird stuff like this or to any WWE show or anything weird like this. Because there's a good chance you would probably go to jail. The dude literally could have died. If those cops were a little bit more heavy handed on the trigger finger, they could have unloaded the clip on him. He could have died. So I don't I don't know. Only thing I can say is um Yeah, don't don't be that person. Don't don't be that person. Just just enjoy the show like everyone else. And if you have having those urges, you may need to seek some 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 help. Mental uh psychiatric help. Something. So you you cannot be this guy. But uh comment down below. Let me know. Are you guys as as concerned and weirded out as I am? Cause I know for a fact I'm definitely like kind of speechless here. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Road to 150k, and I am still your undisputed YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.